Okay. Okay, so we're, rec we're recording now. Okay, so today is November 9th. It's 1130 and we're convening the Amherst Disability. What's the official name of this committee? <laughs> uh, uh, the the Access Advisory Committee. Okay, the Disability Access Advisory Committee. Um, and we'll do roll call. I'm Marty Smith. Um, Elise? Yes, here. Okay, Ruth? Ruth is here. Uh, Saren? Here. Tori? Here. And Maureen? I'm here, but I'm not a member, but yes. yeah. But you're here. Yeah. One, two, three, four. So we have how many people? One, two, three, four, five. So, oh, oh, oh okay, thank you. I'm typing this down. Okay. And so let's see here. Um, are there any announcements? No, okay. Um, uh, so for under new business, we have um, representatives from the Downtown Amherst Foundation. Um, let me pull them up as a panelist. And I just got an email from Myra. She says she can't get in the meeting. I don't know why. Hmm. I try to... Okay, so Gabrielle is here. So let me pull up the agenda one more time. So yes, yeah, so we have representatives from the Downtown Amherst Foundation um, and um, they will uh, be presenting um, to you the proposed uh, performance shell located on the self portion of the town common. Um, and this, uh, the, the committee's uh, review and comments um, to be provided is for the town council's consideration. And um, so, yeah, so let me introduce uh, Gabrielle Gould, who's the executive director of the Amherst Business Improvement District, Amherst BID. And we have the architects that designed the performance shell, um, Ray Mann and Naomi Darling. And so if uh, you folks could, I guess, reintroduce yourselves, and uh, if you could share your screen to provide your presentation to the, the DAAC, that would be helpful. Hey, uh, Maureen, it's Gabrielle Gould. Hi, everybody. I'm Gabrielle Gould. I'm the executive director of the BID and the Downtown Amherst Foundation. I'm sorry, um, I, um, is Maureen, do you have the presentation that we, I, I thought you would present the presentation that we presented to the, um, Sure, uh, I can do uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, We only need, of course, the, the architectural renderings and drawings um, we, and, and um, elevations. We don't need any of the preamble uh, for this meeting. Sorry about that. All right, uh, bear with me for one second. Um, so I'm pulling this up. And Okay, so uh, yeah, just tell me which slide to start on. I'll just start rolling through them. Yeah, just roll right through until the first. Um, and I think that that's a great place to start. Um, and then I am going to allow, I, I'm going to be quiet and allow the experts in this matter, Ray and Naomi to take over unless there's a question that I can answer. Could you give um could you give the DAC a, a background of um you know uh, so um how, how did this all get started, et cetera? Yes, absolutely. So if you want to go back just the Olmsted drawing slide, Maureen, that would be amazing. Um so several years ago, the business improvement district um decided to move forward with the concept of presenting a plan to build a performing arts shell on the South Common where Frederick Law Olmsted had originally intended it to go based on his beautiful drawings that we are so fortunate to have 
um, here in Amherst. Um, so this is his drawings of the South Common where he saw a performance shell. Um, and that um, process by the bid went into a uh, charrette or a contest of sorts where 15 different architects and, and student architects uh, and designers put in plans. Um, there was a board of seven um, judges that judged the contest and Ray Mann and Naomi Darling were the winning uh, architects of the charrette. And we have continued working with them more recently to bring this forward. Our intention is to um, bring this all through all the steps. Um, you, you are our now third step. First is the uh, we went to the town council, then we went to the design review board who have all agreed to keep it continuing and moving forward and are really um, excited about this project. Now we come in front of the DAAC um, to make sure that we are doing everything possible to make this 100% accessible. And um, what this really is, is for our entire community to enjoy arts and culture, both as performers and as audience members. Uh, if you wanna to go to the next slide, Maureen, I think. And um, so I, I kind of went through all that, sorry. And then the next one, um, this is our architects, Ray and Naomi, that you're about to meet. They are both highly accomplished architects. They're also both professors at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And um, what we are blown away with with them is their interest in the environment and environmental design and in building for the surroundings. Um, and we can go to the next slide. Um, this is a little bit about what arts and culture does for a community. Um, I, I don't think um, this is something we have to um, beat anybody over the head with. I think everybody is very aware of how positive an impact, uh, especially free arts and culture for all are. Uh, we see this as an opportunity to have little tiny, tiny uh, humans performing and utilizing this um, and go all the way through college and then professional dance. Uh, music, theater, spoken word, poetry, uh, art, even movie nights. We've, we've chatted with the Amherst Cinema about doing some things on this stage and um, just really creating a, a beautiful, diverse driver for our community and um, visitors alike. And next slide. And now I will let Ray and Naomi take over unless anybody has questions for me about how we got to where we are. Okay, so I think I'll, I'll bring it to the designers. All right, hi, so I'm Naomi. Um, hi, and I'm, nice meeting you, Naomi nice meeting and, you. and yeah. uh, Ray Man. And I'm Ray, sorry <laughs> to speak up too. <laughs> so you know, just Naomi little will little start. Background, you know, you're looking here at a rendering of you know, this is our revision of our concept proposal after speaking with an acoustic consultant and a structural consultant. We'll just preface this by saying that, you know, this is still a concept design. And if we are able to get approval, we know there's still a lot of work to do before we would be ready for construction. Um, there are some things that we know already we would need to have to do for accessibility. But I think generally the idea is that there are two ramps. You know, there's um, what we can see in this image is two ramp. We can see one ramp in the foreground. There's another ramp on the opposite side of the stage. And so both of those ramps would be at one to 20 to allow sort of easy access up to the stage. We're not showing here a curb on the side of that ramp, which we know we would have to add. Um, and and I guess, and that's the main idea. The other thing that you can see if you go, I think to the next slide, Maureen. Uh, maybe keep going. So here you can see that we have put in some uh, paths, you know, down from the, from yeah. Main Street, you know, down to the band shell. And again, that those would be, you know, accessible paths. Um, we we again. This was sort of a preliminary site plan, and you know maybe we're not. So those path locations might 
uh, change somewhat. And so, um, why why will those paths change? So if they need to change for, you know, locations with um, parking proximity to accessible parking spots, or you know, if there's certain things like that we, that we haven't considered yet, you know, that can happen in the if the project is realized. Maybe we can go to the next slide. We can see a little more detail or. Yeah. And um, so what you see here a little closer in is that the uh, band shell as a whole is, is um, set back about 35 feet from the edge of the Baltwood sidewalk. Uh, and so if um, in terms of accessibility from the Baltwood side, uh, we're anticipating that the, you see these sort of two walkways running parallel around either side of the band shell. Those again, um, there's a, a grade drop of about two feet and the, the, the uh, or less, somewhat less than two feet. And so we anticipate that a one to, the slope can be achieved uh, by, or keep it always under one to 20 so that it's um, ex reasonably accessible from the Boltwood side. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't. It was that clear enough. I can't. I don't know if I can read a point or annotate. Yeah, that, that would be helpful if you could. Yeah, if so, you can use the annotate. Okay. Can you see what I'm doing there? So these. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> that was a little crooked, but those two. So this is sort of you know where where. Again, the, the bid plans to have sort of a truck to unload equipment and musicians, but, um, you know, during setup, but also it becomes an area where um, it's a, it should be accessible for people coming up that way to get to the stage. Um, also, I guess these, all the pathways around also should, should provide access point, accessible access points to, and this is the, this, these, these are the ramps. Stage. Where are the ramps? Okay. Do you see my small, smaller arrows? I think so. <laughs> I'm vision impaired, so yeah, it's a little hard to. Uh huh. I don't know. But if it's I... right next to the shell. Yes. Okay. This is the stage. Can, Can you do those in red too? Yeah. I don't know if that's helpful. This is. Yeah, it is a yeah. different color. Yeah. So the, the shorter arrows here are the ramps that would go up to the stage. Okay. Right. And at least, at least just um, because I understand your vision impaired, the ramps are yeah. built into the structure itself. Um, so they're oh. part of the overall design. So they're okay. not additional ramps or external ramps. They're part of the design so that they're, they're encompassed in, within it. And it's a smooth surface. Does that help? Yes. Yeah. It, 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 yes. It'll okay. be a smooth. I mean, tex textured for again slippage, but basically smooth, smooth, smooth wheelchair. Wonderful. That's great. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying. Um. Ray, what is the surface? Go ahead. Oh, Ray, what is the surface of the ramps and the uh, stage itself? Yeah, so we're we're hoping that we can use something like a, a go like a local stone, like a Goshen stone, probably with a. <coughs> uh, um, uh, hone, uh, own surface so that there's, or a, I don't know if it's not painted surface, something that gives it a little bit of texture, mostly smooth. Um, I think ultimately you're going to need to rethink that. Yeah. Because given our weather, this is going to heave and it's going to be really tough to, to work on if you're in a wheelchair to get up it or be on the stage. It's going to become mm -hmm. a tripping hazard very quickly. 
that's <laughs> just I I think the stone's lovely. I think it's a lovely idea, and I love the stone edging. I mean, I think the whole project's excellent, but mm -hmm. I'm concerned about long-term accessibility given yeah. the surfacing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's, uh, you know, we, we will sort of review all the details. Possibly yeah, I'm concerned more. about not just for accessibility, but, you know, you have a photo of a dancer and if you have a stone surface like that, trying to dance on that is a tripping hazard. <laughs> so so no. it's just to, to clarify if there's going to be, when dancers and when we do host dancers, um, there will be a floating Marley floor that will be going on top of that. Okay. Yeah. And then we also have, you know, a stone consultant that we can work with to help us with sort of any detailing and finishing um, installation details that we would need to ensure that we wouldn't have issues with heaving and creating hazards over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we still have many uh, rows to hoe as we go through budgeting, yeah. detailed budgeting, whatnot. So, you know, we may have with <laughs> who knows what. <laughs> but we, we are uh, very mindful of, of uh, these issues of, of making sure that it's a stable, weatherable surface. Um, I mean, of course, we're aspirational and hoping to use local materials, but uh, you know, we'll, we will be mindful of realities as we move forward. Uh, just sorry to interrupt. Uh, we now have um, Marty, uh, Myra Ross. I'm going to make you a, a, a panelist. Uh, she's the chair of this committee. Um, so let's May I ask a question, though? Go ahead. Yes, please. Um, I see that there are like boxes number where, where it says number four. What are those small little box type things in the drawing? That's the um, the structure. So the top drawing is is a plan view. So if you imagine like cutting a plane about three feet above the surface, that's you know the oh. of the steel structure behind it. And then okay. the bottom picture is a, a view you know from the top above the roof. If you are flying over it like a bird. And okay. So, Thank you. Yeah. This is Saren. I have a question. What is this structure going to be made of? The structure itself is constructed. Uh, the, the material, the flat material you see is we're hoping to use a cross laminated timber, which is, uh, is sort of giant panels of wood that you can now are now manufactured so that they perform very well acoustically. And, and we like the the uh, you know, the wood, the wood material as a, you know, as a background for, uh, then there, there will also, they will be tied into a steel structure that then is, uh, you know, attached to the ground and, and holds up the structure. So this wood is going to be weathered? Yeah, and then they'll, they'll be, yeah, well, it'll have a weather, you know, weathering, a weatherable, finish, but we will also, the, the top side uh, will be protected by something like a metal roof or some kind. Uh, for, uh, I was mostly looking at it visually and it mm -hmm. kind of does, I didn't think it blends well with the surrounding and the buildings behind it. And, and it kind of, in the picture, it kind of looked like whitish so that's why I was and also the style is very modern looking whereas that area is more historical kind of looking so there were some of the things that just comes to my mind and also accessible accessible parking places Sarah it's there are uh, handicapped accessible parking spaces on the Spring Street parking area and in front of the Boltwood. So those would service this um, and are considered, you know, in the right location. And um, we will be, we have already been in front of the design review board with this design for um, 
you know, the, the design of it. Um, and then we will be going to a historical commission to TSO and back to the council. And those are all great times. And, and I'm happy to tell you when those are all being held. So you can give public comment on the design if you'd like to join us at those. I finally got in and I finally got audio. I am so sorry. Anyway, I'm on my phone. Can anyone see me or hear me? Yeah, yes. hi Myra. Okay, oh. I am so sorry. I have no idea what happened. It's the first time with iOS 15, I guess, and it doesn't like this Zoom. I don't know. Anyway, um, I have a couple questions. I heard a little bit about what you were talking about with the ramp material, um, that it that it would it sounded like it was very bumpy intent in, that the intention is bumpy. So I think that's something that you really need no, to look no, at. No, it, it, it's smooth. It is a completely smooth surface. Oh, I'm, Marty objected to something about it. I don't, I, maybe I didn't hear it. Um, but um, I have a question about, let's assume that it's a performer with a disability. Um, how does that performer get onto the stage? Um, and does that, um, is it the same kind of a uh, way that the, that non-disabled, non-mobility disabled people would get onto the stage? Uh, yes, there's two ramps on either side of the stage for everybody to use. So everybody goes up to the stage via ramps that are one to 20 and that, that, that are integrated into the design for the you know, platform for the band show, so. Okay, okay. Um, and I assume one of the reasons you did this is because there's no room for in the belongings of the performers. So I assume you took care of that with a locked space behind that's accessible. Like if you want, if you're a performer, you have a, a instrument case might have another instrument in it. You might have to, a purse, something like that. Is the place that you would keep that backstage um, completely accessible? Um. Uh, I'll jump in, Myra, on this one. Um, we have hosted many music events with broaden stages, um, and we don't really provide a locked space. Um, we do provide a space at the back of the stage that will be 100% accessible that is roped off for the performers, and that's where the performers that we've worked with over the past several years have kept their, their belongings. Okay, I, I guess what I read was that that was one of the problems that the, that the performers don't find that they have uh, adequate safe space for their stuff. Is that not what I read? Where did you read that? I guess on your materials, maybe I didn't, but I, I, would, nope. I guess I was, um, I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, who's using the stage? Um, and who's using the stage and what do they need to keep backstage while they're performing to make sure that all their stuff is safe and accessible to them. Um, and I guess if you've taken care of that in a way that you think is fine, um, I don't know, I'll just speak from the perspective of a performer, you need places to keep your stuff where you don't need to worry about it. Like I've seen fiddlers there, for example, um, fiddlers have might have an extra bow in their case. Bows cost a lot of money sometimes. I'm just wondering if there's a way that the, since you're building something new, is there a way that those people, and I'm, you know, all kinds of musicians might have um, equipment they're not using at the moment. I don't know. I just wondered if the, you had a safe, accessible space for items that belong to performers. I guess not. Just uh, maybe, maybe this would be helpful. Um, could uh, Ray or Naomi with your handy dandy an annotation, um, could you show and describe where performers would uh, be, uh, where they would uh, store their instruments and that mm -hmm. personal belongings? Yeah. And clarify, is that intended yeah. to be EA accessible? Mm -hmm. It has to be accepted. The thinking, and maybe Gabrielle can speak to this more, was uh, we were asked to sort of keep it, you know, fairly, the band shell fairly minimal and that things would be, you know, there'd be a truck that can, that will bring equipment and uh, 
Presumably. Yeah, uh, yeah, Ray. Um, you know, I mean, I think if you look at any performance shell or band shell, um, whether it's in East Hampton, Northampton, Manhattan, um, Boston, um, the, 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 our focus is to build a performance space and not a lot more on the common. Um, we don't want to have a whole bunch of structures um, whether locked or unlocked um, or storage, we're not looking for storage. Um, the, the, the lighting and sound equipment will come in in a um, sort of panel van or truck, if you will, that will store everything that we have. Um, I'm sure musicians can use that because it'll be empty and it will be parked there um, if they feel that they need to to have some place for their instruments. Um, again, it's I, I think about the community band that we present at several times throughout the year, I'm thinking about all the musicians that we've brought to the Common, um, especially this year from Manhattan to locally. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's never been an issue. Um, okay. You know, it's, we, this is, this is a fair weather performance space. We're not going to be out there in, in, you know, monsoons or hurricanes. It's, you know, it, it, if it starts to rain, then chances are the performance is over because the audience will not want to be there. So, again, I think we're trying to create something that is an outdoor space. There, there are many things that it will not be able to be, just okay. like the band shell at um, in East Hampton is just simply a structure, um, you know, and the performers leave their their cases on the side of the stage. Okay. How big is the structure? The, the, platform itself, the platform itself, the stage is about 24 by 38. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. I guess from the should, perspective of this committee, enough. say that again? I'm sorry. So it should be large enough for, you know, a small scale orchestra, as well as, you know, smaller, smaller performance groups. Yep. All right, um, from the perspective of our committee, I mean, it's all about accessibility. So you've said that getting up to the stage is ramps one to 20 and getting to this to the stage is going to be a hard surface. Um, right. Yep. So I guess those are the issues for this committee. Um, Saren's comment, is exactly the same as what my husband's comment was, which was that it looks so out of character. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, so, but that's not for our committee. Um, so, um, and who chose the location? Is that the historic location that it that when there used to be um, performances on the common in yesteryear, or is it a new new selected location? It is the location that we have placed our uh, our uh, uh, stages on for several years, but it is it, the location is chosen based on Frederick Law Olmsted's original drawings when he designed the common. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So it okay. is historical back to the 1700s. Okay. And the only other thing I heard was the parking. Um, the parking along Boltwood Avenue, if it's one way, um, it is, is it will not be one way. Oh. Has that really? been changed? Boltwood Avenue is a two-way street. It's going to stay that way even after the first uh, the parking lot is taken. It's my understanding that it's not changing. Oh. Uh, I don't that's not, new to us. I don't think no, that's yeah. not what's in the plan. Yeah, yeah so the uh, Gabrielle, that is actually under discussion um, with the town council and staff. Um, oh. um, so the town oh. council approved uh, the concept, the, 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 the north portion of the town common um, back in May or June. And that plan does show that Boltwood Avenue would be one way heading southbound. Oh. So you could turn onto Boltwood from Main Street and then and then um, exit onto Route Nine. Um, so I mean that uh, that of course could be subject to change, uh, but that is the, um, the Maureen. Does parking does parking remain on both sides though? I thought uh, we could pull not up. in the picture that they showed. Yeah. 
Um, I, um, hold on. I did, um, I do have the, the town council approved plan um, on my computer, but perhaps um, something that could be useful uh, while I try to find that, um, I'm going to share um, um, a, share a different document that I think this could be a good opportunity for the DAAC and the applicant to discuss is um, parking on uh, the Spring Street lot and the pathways for this band shell. And, you know, what do members feel, um, you know, if walkways were to, um, well, again, to look at the parking with it, uh, located at Spring Street, but specifically the ADA parking spaces at the Spring Street parking lot and look at that in relation to the proposed pathways for the band shell and to see if you, you as a committee have any suggestions for the applicant as they, you know, revise this um, forward. So give me a second. I just need to pull up. Okay. Well, can I make a recommendation? I can't see that. So somebody who can see it, there is the good question for a reason, I'm sure. Marty, can what? I? Yeah. <laughs> so one of the problems that I see is the handicapped parking in the Spring Street lot is on the east end. And there's a substantial grade um, between the east and the west sides of the common. And I would like to see a sidewalk along Boltwood on the east side. That would get you from the accessible parking to the bandstand. Instead of making people go all the way up the slope and then back down into the bowl. Wait, talk about that again. Where's your sidewalk that you want to put? On the east side of the common. You want okay. it right here, right? Because there is no mm -hmm. sidewalk on that side. You mean on the Lord Jeff side? Yes, on That's... the Lord Jeff side. Okay. Okay, yeah. on the east side of the common, but on the west side of the street, you would like right. a sidewalk. Yes. Something okay. like that, right, Marty? Yes. Where... Yes, because your parking, your handicapped parking is, your accessible parking is on that uh, Lord Jeff end of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull up um, a new, uh, this is a, an aerial of the, of the south portion of the town mm -hmm. common. And, um, and so the proposed band shell is located just south of, um, what's the number of this? Um, Gabriel, what, what's the number of this uh, building here? I uh, I don't remember the number. I think it's called, I think it's the Porter House. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's so it's yep. just uh, yep. just south of the Porter House, which is yeah. at Forty Six Boltwood Ave. And so yeah, exactly. And that's where Olmstead. Um, this uh, uh, the proposed location is in line of the Olmstead location, um, and so. Um, this aerial shows the existing parking lot at Spring Street. Um, I can zoom in a minute to see where it shows the ADA parking spots. Oh, you can and, see them right there. Yeah, so it's, I think, one here and one here. So there's two located, here, um, located at the southeast no. corner. Northeast. <laughs> Northeast oh. corner? Well, oh, of, the, of the lower common. Yeah. It's the lower area. Yeah. Oh, and then there's uh, two parking, two ADA parking spots at the northwest corner. Yeah. Um, and so, and then along Boltwood Avenue, there is currently on street parallel parking on both sides of the road. And it looks like uh, there's, so there's a sidewalk on, on the, um, on the um, uh, Boltwood inside and, but there isn't a sidewalk on the town common side. No, there's a muddy path. Oh, okay. there's a muddy path. Okay. Yeah. So, so Marty, you, you're suggesting that to the town council. So, your recommendations are for the town council. Is that can the um, that you're recommending that the town uh, consider putting in a uh, a real sidewalk on yes. the on the town com on that side on the west yeah, side. Yeah, to provide to provide accessible parking for that. Mm -hmm. I, I have a yes. question. 
I have a question. How many uh, handicap accessible uh, pa parking spots are in that parking uh, right across from town hall currently? I believe there are four. There are four. Yeah. So uh, that same number would have to be uh, made available. Um, it would need to be replaced because the, um, you know, uh, if I remember our previous conversation, um, there weren't going to be that many on Bonkwood itself. This lot is isn't correct? going away. This lot is staying. Yeah. And let's try to, uh, we can talk about the other parking lot in front of Town Hall later in the meeting. Um, but let's okay. uh, try thought, to just I focus. That was being, I thought that, I'm sorry, maybe it was my mistake. I thought it was being removed in order to, um, you know, put in this, this new structure and stuff. Okay. I'm corrected. And so let me, I might have to share my screen again. Um, and so um, I just walked you through the parking on Spring Street parking lot. So again, there's two ADA parking spaces at the southeast corner where my mouse is twirling. And then at the north, two ADA spaces at the northwest corner. And there's a side, Parallel parking on both sides of Boltwood Ave. Um, there's an existing sidewalk on the east side of Boltwood Ave, but there isn't a sidewalk on the west side of Boltwood Ave. And so, um, what are your thoughts um, about the pathways, the proposed pathways uh, that are associated with this band shell? Um, are you, um, do you feel that there's uh, that, that it's fine or do you have any other suggestions so people would have to get out get out of their car cross boltwood and hopefully go to a sidewalk with a good curb cut on the other side on the common side of boltwood so that they could get closer to where the band shell would be or and closer to where they would be able to be um, audience people right so is that what you're saying, Maureen? Are you suggesting, I can't see the picture. So are you suggesting that there might be something we need to think about with those pathways? Because I don't really know what they're looking like. Yeah, yeah, you don't. Um, and so it, uh, they have sort of a, cur a, a curved um, walkway that connects from the stage to the uh, to, um, sorry, I'm trying to think of directions, to the uh, south west, west corner. Yep. Um, and so that would be a good connection to the ADA spaces at that corner. Um, would the board want to consider um, thinking about providing a sidewalk connecting from the stage to the existing ADA spaces here? Or maybe, um, with uh, Marty's suggestion about provide the town providing a sidewalk along the west side of Boltwood Ave, as shown on this plan, I think Naomi or Ray, um, and we just drew it in. I think that's what we were. That's what the suggestion was. So I just drew. We just drew it in for clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I think I'm that's a really good suggestion. Since it's muddy anyway. Yeah. Because people have taken it over and made it a. De de facto sidewalk, <coughs> right? Yeah. Um, any, right. Does, any, does anybody have any other observations about? This is Tori and I, um, so the sidewalk, Marty was saying that the sidewalk would help with parallel parking if, if you're um, in an accessible van so that we'd be able to drop our lifts um, safely and not into the street. Um, so I'm wondering if the sidewalk can be extended um, to give more options for, for parking. Which way? Back toward Main Street? Um, toward Route 9. So right now oh, it nine. only goes, right now it only goes to the performing arts structure. 
Okay, so you if, want us, uh, yeah, so you if, want to uh, extend it all the way to to Amherst College, I think is what you want to do. Just completely surround the. Yes, thank you, Naomi. Yes, thank you. That that way, it it just gives us options to have parallel parking on the street if we need it. Mm -hmm. If all four spaces were full in the Spring Street lot. That's a very good idea. Can you, um, I assume that you can parallel park a van, any kind of a van and lower your lift onto a sidewalk, even if it's not a designated HP space, as long as the space is long enough for a van. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And also, uh, Myra, the sidewalk has to be wide. So when you get off the lift, because the lift will be on the sidewalk. So right. they should be after you get off the side, your lift, there should be space for you to maneuver around. OK, that's an interesting question. All right. So that's a, t that's a question for the town, actually, that might help them solve the parking problem with what they're taking away. But um, that's, um, that's a great idea. Okay, um, is there anything else specific to this project that the designers need to hear about? I don't no? know, is there any more to hear about or is this it? So what, what I've heard so far for recommendations is provide sidewalks along the uh, west side of Boldwood Avenue um, for that whole extent and um, uh, of the south portion of the town common. I ensure that all hard surfaces are smooth and ADA compliant. Um, anything else? Um, when you're going to have performances, are you going to have um, porta potties or what's happening? How are you going to accommodate the crowd? Uh, or, it, you know. <laughs> depending on the type of performance, i.e. the expected crowd, we will absolutely be bringing in porta potties and we will be bringing in the kind that are handicapped accessible for large performances. Okay, so that's that was my question. So I have one question. This is Saran. Um, in uh, certain times of the year, they do some um, events. Like uh, I know there is a fair that is brought into town, and yeah. I know young kids really love that. So this uh, stage is not portable, right? It just is stable. Saren, this is a permanent structure, but it is placed in a way that we have looked at all of the events that have happened over the past decade, that it complements all of those events and does not hinder or get in the way of any of those events that we've been able to host and enjoy on the South Common. Not even the fair, huh? And not even the I fair. <laughs> Actually, it will be really great for the fair. And we've spoken to a couple of Rotary members who are very excited that now the fair might be able to have some live performances. That would be nice, actually. <laughs> great. So uh, do, does anyone have any other questions or comments to provide uh, the applicants, the applicant and designer? Maureen, I have a clarification. Um, we cannot design nor implement sidewalks. So I'm assuming that that is a recommendation that goes yes. to the town council and town management, not to us, correct? Right. Yeah, so the recommendations are for the town council. Thank um, you. Yeah. And so, okay. yeah, and, and so obviously a follow-up conversation would be needed and, and um, of, I, I would just, I would, I, I guess I have no assumptions, but if I were, I would say that the town uh, would be, uh, would need to entertain uh, putting sidewalks and, and that they would be funding that, but um, I don't run on assumptions, but. 
Well, it sounds like regardless of this performance shell being built or not, it, it's the right place for a part, for a sidewalk because yes, um, I think the South Common is is pretty difficult to get to, um, you know, uh, from different sides. So that sounds like something that we should all be pushing for regardless. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a good plan. Yeah. I want to oh. say hello, Gabrielle. Gabrielle is my neighbor. Hi, Maya. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm good. We discovered each other when. I got her rowing machine delivered to my house. And I called, <laughs> and I called up the, the FedEx and I said, it weighs 200 pounds, I can't lift it. You'll have to come <laughs> and get us to, to the right people because I can't do it. And I don't even know how it got out of here. Did you take it? My husband came and got it, but Myra's 34 <laughs> Harvard and I'm 34 Canton and we're three doors away from each other. So Aww. it's mildly confusing to all. It's Aww. ridiculous. I mean, there's so few houses here. They didn't need to have 234s at all. But uh, it was just hilarious. It was like, I can't move your mower, your rowing machine. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was very funny. Anyway, um, so I so think this is, this is really, how far off the ground is the stage? I forgot to ask that. I might have missed it. Just curiosity. I think with the 1 to 20, the stage will be about 12, 12 inches off. So sort of low seating height. The stage will only be 12 inches from the ground. Wow. OK. Yeah, with the, with the natural slope of the common, uh, I think we have a long section that we added to this presentation later. But the, you know, there's pretty good visibility even with a low stage. And I, you know, That's cool. so people don't do even is, need to use the ramps. I mean, yeah. people who can walk and just climb up, just get right up on the stage. Well, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and if it's only 12 for, inches. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And, and for Elise and Myra, um, the slide that's up right now is a uh, slide that shows the slope of the natural slope of the South Common from the, from the east to the west. No, so, sorry, I'm really bad at directions. Never eat shredded wheat. Yeah, from the east side, so from South Pleasant Street sloping all the way down to the Boltwood, it's really a, a natural amphitheater and it's got such beautiful uh, seating that is just raked all the way up the hill that you've got view. I mean, just the view, the sight lines are really fantastic for the sighted. That's cool. That's great. I do have one question. Um, and this pertains to people like me who are vision impaired, um, and they're up on that stage. Is there, I don't know how to put this, is there some kind of color contrast? Like, I don't know what's around the stage. Uh, I'm not talking about the ramps. Well, yeah, to, um, uh, you're on the stage, for instance, how do you know where the edge is? Uh. And it's a dumb question, but. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not. A it is a very good question. And yeah. actually, it's, a... actually it, it's not only visual, but if you're moving around on a stage, if there could be even like a rough edge, like a foot uh -huh. from the edge. Something um, needs to be there for contrast. Yeah, I think that there's, you know, there's various ways in which you can sort of etch into whatever surface it is to make sure that there's a texture or uh, some something, you know, kind of like the edge of a subway. Yep. Wow. Yeah, or even a color, you know, because okay, if color. you're down the, the ground right. around the stage is probably mm. going to be the same color, right? Uh, or close. Or that there's a contrast. Well, sure. isn't the ground green? Yeah, well, the ground is green. The, the, there is a okay, there is a walkway right in front of the stage, so it'll be oh, so it'll be black. Black mm -hmm. or most likely asphalt, like the rest. And what color did you plan to make the stage? Probably something in the, I mean, I think it'll read as sort of light uh, gray, grayish. I don't know, you could. So like, there is a color contrast. Like mm -hmm. cement. Yeah. yeah. The stage will be like a, a cement or wood. No, no what cement. a lot. I think that would. <laughs> the aspiration for the stage is to use like a local stone. Um, but again, you know, we'll have to, once we get into the actual design, we'll have to see what's possible. Okay. As long as it's completely flat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, so everyone right so you're uh recommending that there is a you know border ta uh, tactile um contrast on along the ramp along the border uh, along the, the, edge of the, the stage. border the edge of the, border the, stage. Of the ramp oh, okay from from um along the border this is oh. a brilliant suggestion elise i can tell you i am a person who has needed that in the past when i went into mm -hmm. the orchestra pit it would have been really nice yeah, yeah. Yeah, that and even a, a, a change in color just for contrast. You mm -hmm. know, it doesn't have to be a big splashy right. thing. It could, you know, could be worked in maybe. Mm -hmm. Right. As right. well as tactile. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent idea. Great. Thanks. I have, Thank you. I have one question. You said there would be a floating stage for dancers. So yeah, how do you do that? How? Uh, it, it, so a Marley stage is something that we would have and it would just float on, um, it wouldn't, I, I, floating is the wrong word, it gets lifted off the stage so that the dancers aren't hitting the stone. It's like a padded stage, if you will. Okay. Th think of carpeting and then the padding underneath the carpeting. Does that make more sense? Yes. So that there's and, some um, give. Sure, I'm but just that thinking. Would, that would be for dance performances only. Right, and if there was, I suppose it wouldn't matter if there was a if there was a disabled dance troupe or something coming, then they probably wouldn't use the floating stage. But I can't assume that. I'm wondering if, how. If there was <laughs> a, 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 if we were bringing in a. a specific troupe, I'm sure that they would have in their rider on and, and in their contract what we'd have to build or they would bring their own amenities for that. Um, I, 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 I have never worked with a dance troupe. I've worked with a dance troupe that had one or two members um, with disabilities, but I've never worked, I've never personally worked with a group that is all in all. Um, so yeah, I can't really answer that to be very honest. Mm -hmm. Except that I know that we would work with whichever, whatever groups we're bringing in, we will do, you know, accommodate us as to our best ability. Okay. Usually those floor systems do have tape, tapered panels that you can put down that are, that bring it down to zero, you know, zero. So you can get, get on the flooring. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That makes sense. Okay. So I think that this is really cool conversation. If we have any additional questions or comments, should we send them to you, Gabrielle, or how should we? I think it would be great to send them to me and I will share them with uh, Ray and Naomi um, because this is not my area of expertise, but it, it keeps, I can at least get, gather the questions and get them all to Ray and Naomi at once. Cool. Uh, actually, if, if I, if I uh, may interject, um, if, if either you could direct them to me and then I can pass them on to Gabrielle or you could or just copy me on the email Myra yeah. another yeah 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 no but I mean people have thought about this as we've gone on and there have been some very good suggestions that have emerged so I, there might be more who knows I have anyway. one more question yep um I maybe I missed this maybe it was brought up but if you're going to have dance a I'm speaking as a performer myself. If you're going to have a dance troupe um, or dancers and you're going to bring that floating, you know, that extra stage surface, there, it, there is a way for that surface to have some give so that dancers don't kill their feet. Yes. Okay. So I think that's the point of it, isn't it? That, Why that, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's, that's the point of a Marley floor. Okay. Okay, thank you. I have oh, one welcome. question too. Okay. Uh, has noise <clears throat> that will, the, uh, from the uh, bands playing in there or something, has it been raised as a possible concern? Like, because there are, uh, there's a hotel on that street, not too far from there. And I think there are some uh, residences on Spring Street. Uh, Saren, we've brought many performances to the common um, on different nights and different days and many different events have taken place on the common and we have never had concerns whether it's been rock and roll or jazz in July 
from the Inn at Boldwood. Um, actually, we have presented this to Amherst College that owns the Inn at Boldwood, and they are very excited about this, about the design, about the concept. And, um, it, you know, I think like anything in Amherst, nothing goes past 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. So it's not like we're going to have a rock and roll band up there blaring at 1 a.m. Oh, I see. I see. I can tell you from my um, family experience, Daniel's getting married there in June. And they have an arrangement if there's anything on the common at the time of any ceremonies or anything outside, they're not allowed to play. I mean, they have to arrange to take a break at the times that the inn tells them to because of um, events that are, you know, like ceremonial events outside at the inn, which I think is cool. Mm. Um, so I don't, I mean, I hope in practice that's true. But that's what they said that that you know whatever time the ceremony is going to be what if there's something happening they'll be taking a break for that half hour or hour so that's sort of cool that, that, that's a point taken does um so i've um <clears throat> jotted down the uh recommendations thus far um do, does anyone have any other uh questions or comments uh, uh, does someone want, um, or do you think that you as a committee are ready to make a motion? Well, what kind, of this motion we what kind of a motion do we need? Um, a motion to get, uh, do, do you, uh, well, firstly, do you want to give um, a positive recommendation to the town council um, for the proposed band shell? Um, with the following suggestions, um, and those would be provide a sidewalk along the west side of uh, Bullwood Ave, ensure that all hard surfaces are smooth and ADA compliant, and provide contract color or uh, tactile um, contrast along the border. Color of the and color uh, and okay, sure. Um, and uh, tactile contrast on the edging of the stage. Along uh, yeah, along the border of the stage platform. Was there anything else? Uh, was there? I don't think so. Okay. I just mentioned the accessible porta potties, but that's sure. going to kick in. One. Yeah, it's going to kick in with the number of people, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it, sure, why not? Uh, ensure that a ADA porta potty uh, is provided. Um, does that work? It's provided. For well, it ought to be if porta potties are provided. Right. So not every. Right. Not everything. Thank you. That's a good clarification. Right. If yeah. right. porta potties are required, uh, or are required to be provided, that, that there should be an ADA um, yeah. porta potty. Um, yeah. Or body provided. Yeah. Okay. You would think they would have come up with a better name for that. With the world of with the world of euphemisms, you would have thought they would have come up with one for them. For that, that none of us would know what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Danny can. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Anybody want to make that motion? Wait a minute. Oh, I'd like to add one more thing to that, and that would yeah. be for uh, periodic review during design development and CDs. Perfect. And CDs, what does that mean? Construction documents. Oh, sure. So, um, so are you suggesting that um, they come back at like a 90% review? I think we ought to see a 50 and a Before 90. 90. Yep. If, wait, a 50 and a what? 90. All right. 90, it's too late to do anything. <laughs> And it would be a specifically, you know, for, uh, you know, for your purposes, it would be in relation to ADA components. And yeah, and so Marty, yeah. Uh, could you um, speak to why um, why fifty percent? Um, just uh, uh, for just to uh, why is 50 that fifty percent to see what's changed because things mm -hmm. will change, and also to see proposed materials for surfacing, and then ninety percent is prior to bid. So just to see what's actually going out to bid because things still change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, an, it's a 
evolutionary process. Right. Remember, you asked Maureen if it had been done there, would have been a lot better outcome. So. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right. Um, so, does anyone want to make the motion? I'll make the motion as stated. Okay. How about second? I'll second. Elise. Elise. Okay. All right. We can vote the motion. Maureen, do you want to call the people? Or, or yes. Yeah, so, uh, Marty. Yes. Elise. Yes. Tori. Yes. Saren? Yes. Myra? Yes. Ruth? Yes. Okay, Congratulations. That's cool. <laughs> no, that's uh, cool. right. Thank you so much uh, for- yeah, Thank attending. you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, we you. need- Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Whoops. We have a wonderful, beautiful day. Thank, thank you. you. You as it well. Lovely. Okay. Um, all right. So we need to move quickly to the um, downtown improvements. You sent us a list of them. Um, does anybody yeah. have any comments or questions? So I actually I uh, sent um, some slides. Um, I I could go through them real quick um, if you bear with me for a minute. Um, this. Hold on a second. Um, ADA approved. Um, it's cool that you put together this document, actually, um, you know, the list. I mean, yeah, it was a list with pictures. So I think it's great. And you should continue to add to it yep. every time, every time, and um, every time there's something. I think it's a great document to maintain because it can get us more grants, I would assume. Yeah, I agree. And um uh, perhaps we could do this uh, on an annual basis is, you know, we're basically at the end of this calendar year. So perhaps, next, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll keep, you know, keep track of, of ADA improvements in town um, that, you know, th that are being constructed each year. And um, I think it would be great to then put it in a slideshow uh, to yeah. share with you at the end of the year. And I actually sent this to, um, Paul Bockelden and um, and he said, "Oh, this is great. Can I share this with the town council?" Yeah, no, it is great, and yeah. I think it should be more than just construction projects. It should probably include anything like when you when you include the assistive listening devices. I mean, there's really not a picture that you can take of that, but you know. But I think anytime anything is done to improve the accessibility to the town. Um, I think it should go into this list. I love the idea that you did it. Yeah. yeah. So let me just go through it real quick. Um, so this slide shows where all the construction um, projects took place in downtown. Um, and I'll walk you through each of them. Um, so um, bear with me. I have all these things blocking my view here. So at the corner of North Pleasant and Cal Coles Lane, uh, where um, Brugger's Bagel is located, um, the the, through the Mass uh, Mass Office on Disability Grant, um, we redid the the crosswalk and um, curb ramp, um, and so it, it was in. Uh, this photo shows the before show. The before photo shows the conditions which were in very poor shape with mm -hmm. um, you know with many cracks and uneven surfaces and now after construction there's now um, you know it was repaved and includes an imprinted thermal plastic crosswalk and detective uh, detectable uh, warning surfaces and there is that color contrast um, provided um, for the crosswalk as well and, right. and then, and then um, the next slide shows uh, the crosswalk uh, at North, uh, along North Pleasant Street in front of CVS and the old Starbucks uh, location. Again, the crosswalk was in very poor condition and, and it's been replaced with a new crosswalk and curb ramp. Um, and it again has uh, thermoplastic and detective warning surfaces and um, contrasted colors. 
Maureen, mm -hmm. yeah. What does ther what is thermoplastic? Uh, it is a stamp, and maybe Marty uh, could better explain explain it to me. So it's not brick. It does look like brick, but it is a stamp that is. Um, oh, I see. Here it's like melted. Me. It's like melted, melted into yeah. the surface. I yeah. see. It's nothing like it melts the snow uh, 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 that is no. on it or anything. No, that would be like cool, that. wouldn't it? That would yeah, be cool. I, <laughs> wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Very costly. Okay. Uh, but and then so the next one is a uh, pleasant walk, um, and so this is um, connects uh, the sidewalk along North Pleasant Street, and it connects back to the par Boltwood Walk garage and parking lot. And uh, uh, like st the old Starbucks location is um, just adjacent to this um, pleasant walk. And so again, it, uh, it was in poor condition and um, it, it was um, with many cracks and whatnot. And now um, it has a new uh, concrete uh, sidewalk for the whole extent of that. And, um, and so those, those items were all covered under the fiscal year 2020 MOD grant. Um, the next couple slides will show that DPW through the general improvements fund for sidewalks, they redid the sidewalks in front of um, the Jones Library along Amity Street and in uh, along North Pleasant Street in front of Dana's clothing store and um, Share Coffee. Um, and so th those look really nice. Um, um, and, uh, and then the next slides, um, or la the last slide is about, um, is, uh, let's see here, is uh, replacing a section of a sidewalk and crosswalk um, along East Pleasant Street uh, in the vicinity um, of um, East Pleasant and Prey Street intersection. And so that project is underway and that's being funded through the mass dot shared streets um, project um, and so um, this is just one piece of it that's um, finished or close to being finished and I oh and then oh, of course of course uh, last but not least um, another project funded through the mass dot grant is at the bang center the existing staircase there is was in very poor conditions, um, um, steps were crumbling in pieces. Um, and I, I believe in, even the town uh, put a barricade up for people to not use this, uh, the staircase because it was in such a, a poor condition. The staircase has now been um, uh, reconstructed um, and uh, a new ramp has um, been provided um, that provides um, a direct access uh, for folks trying to get to the Musanti Health Center um, from Boltwood Walk. Um, so it connects from existing sidewalks um, and then um, creates a new ramp that gets down to the Musanti Center. And, and then it connects to the existing sidewalks that are behind the bank center, which then br bring you to, um, to, um, to other apartments, such as where Elise lives. Um, right. Yep. And uh, so, Elise, what building, where do you live again? Um, um, Clark House. The Clark House, yes. Um, so, yeah, so it, it's really, it's really great. And, and uh, Elise was at the ribbon cutting and I, I, we've um, have received a, a lot of, um, you know, positive feedback about this project among all the other projects. And so um, that's it. And so, you know, special thanks to, to, so this committee uh, that's provided such great guidance along the way um, to the Mass Office on Disability and, the, and Mass DOT who uh, awarded the grants to us, um, the planning department, uh, DPW, inspection services, uh, facilities, I forgot to list them. And then um, the contractor that I believe has done all the work is uh, Taylor Davis Construction. So uh, yeah. there you go. Great. So Maureen, uh, I hope uh, they give priority to snow plowing on that ramp. Yeah. Winter yeah. months. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, yeah. That's a whole other can of worms. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it's going to be widely used, and I hate to think of a slippery ramp. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we only no point taken, Saren, and I can make a note of it. Um, you know, because particularly because that's part of the Bang Center, um, there is uh, a there is a maintenance people that are routinely um, maintaining the inside and the exterior of the Bang Center um, through our facilities department, and and they will definitely uh, keep an eye. Um, and uh, keep routine maintenance of that ramp and staircase and, and uh, sidewalks, um, you know, throughout the year. So um, definitely point well taken. Um, so we only Is have it, 15 we've, minutes. Oh, wow, we're that late. Okay, mm -hmm. so we need to figure out um, the, the DOT grant for this year that you applied for was for the Bangs door, right? Correct. Okay, and then, so we have to talk about capital improvements apparently the assistive listening devices are included in fy22 capital request yes for uh, fy23 23 yep okay yep. okay so that's that is not something they approved yet that is one of the things on their list the on okay. our okay so is there anything we need to add to that and you suggested perhaps that we talk about those good old accessible um, warning, you know, accessible um, traffic signals, which don't seem to have changed very much, although a little bit. Um, so I'm wondering if, you not know, how enough. do we, not enough. How do we get that to get done as well? Is that gonna compete with the assist of listening devices? I mean, it question. seems like Marty said the other time, and she's right, that it ought to come out of maintenance because it is maintenance. And the fact that they didn't do it when they could have has now made it a very large capital expense. Um, and uh, it's a problem because it's not going to make it in as a very large capital expense. So what do we do with that? So have we heard back from the DPW about what the solution is? Nope. Well, that's the first thing we need. We need to know whether they are fixable. Mm -hmm. It's scary not having those signals. Yeah. I think it's yeah. time for us to somehow, and I don't know if, if uh, who do we talk to? I mean, we have to go directly to Paul Bachelman and we have to make him listen this time. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. I thought that was our recommendation last time was to well, alert Paul Bachelman. It was, because and he didn't we're respond. Not the responses that we were looking for. He didn't respond. So I right. can um, pull out my July letter and change the date and change some of the other things and just send it again. Um, but well, also, if they are irreparable, maybe it should be included in the capital budget for right. 2023. Right. That could be. And then we can also move that all the signals have the same time span and also the same alert sound. Yes. Across the whole city. So we maybe can, we should we include that. that. Forget That's about true. maintenance of that and everything. Replace everything with a new one. Well, I think we need to get price. I mean, I first we need to get the attention of somebody who cares about it. And um, people who work for the town who care about it so far are Maureen and Pat DeAngelis. And that's about the end of the list that I know of. It's going to um, take a tragedy to get people to care, unfortunately. Right. Yeah, so... Um, yeah. I don't know, anybody have any ideas about our political poli next political action step here? Maybe we should present it to the, uh, the town council, ask for some time and we should just bring it to them that we've been really bringing this up. And this is according to ADA, they have to be in place. 
but we understand since nothing is being done, maybe it is irreparable. If that is the case, we really strongly urge that they be replaced ASAP. Sounds like a good happens. letter to write, Sarah. And you want to write that letter? Sounds good to me. Oh, the letter or uh, ask for their time to for us to do a presentation or to voice our concerns. I think we need to go to Paul Bachelman first. Um, I don't know. Maybe we don't. I don't know. I'm I'm very frustrated. I don't know what to do. Um, the person in charge of all of that is not interested in fixing it. So we have to go over his head. And the only way I can think to do this is to be pretty direct going over his head. So we can go over his head to his boss or we can go over his head to the town council and make something public out of it. And I, I don't know what's the best thing to do. Maybe, public might uh, be good, actually. Uh, Myra, Get other people on the, on the bandwagon. I'm Myra, sorry. Maybe yeah, Marty. You know, you can't we get to Paul with a CC to the town council? I mean, you yeah. know, we can't see it we as can. necessarily doing it separately okay. at this point. Okay. Marty, what did you start to say? Oh, I wasn't saying anything. Uh, uh, but I would again bring up the the risks. I mean, mm -hmm. it is a it is a risk. Yeah. It, it is. is. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, if yeah. you want to limit risk, then you need to fix these or replace them. Okay. All right. I, would I will work on the letter. I will send my reworked letter to Maureen for your approval that goes through Maureen. Um, now I, we I, have everybody at the meeting, so that's something we could do. Um, I think it will also stress the liability issue because okay. I yes. think if we're at, if, if the town is at risk for being sued. Sometimes that's the spark that lights the fire. Maybe. Okay. And also Speaking... that the law requires them to provide yep. those services in our town. If they're right? providing traffic signals, they have to be accessible. It's true. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of letters, the last time we had a meeting about the North Common, we um, talked about stuff about the handicapped parking, um, which some solutions just came out today. If Boltwood were two way, and it were on the other side, you know, I mean, there are ways to solve this problem, but they haven't solved them in the design that we have. So the letter that I wrote that went to all of you, I could not send to the council um, and, and to um, Dave Zomek because Marty gave us great ideas, but they came in a, in a form that wasn't through a public meeting. So Marty suggested some things that we put in the letter that are now in the letter, um, but we couldn't, we could, I couldn't send it because that stuff didn't come out in a public meeting. So if somebody wants to read the letter out loud so that it becomes known as part of the public record, then we can vote on it, even though um, Marty wasn't here when she made the suggestions. You understand the problem? Yes. Okay, all right. Do you want so, me to read it? Sure. Okay. At its November, this is to David Ziomek, uh, Amherst Assistant Town Manager from the Amherst Accessibility Access Advisory Committee, dated November 9th, 2021, need for van accessible parking in the North Common redesigned. At its November 9th meeting, the Disability Access Advisory Committee voted unanimously to inform- No, that should change to October, whatever it was. Anyway. Okay, October. Yeah, yeah we'll change that date. Okay. Uh, what was that? October 19th. Okay. Why did I? Okay. October 19th, it should say right there. Okay, go ahead. Yes, it was the 19th. Yeah. To inform town staff charged with developing plans for the redesign of the north portion of the town common that the DAAC have questions and concerns about how the redesign affects the number of handicapped parking spaces provided and their relocation. The DAAC believes that this matter has not been satisfactorily addressed in the redesign voted by the town council on May 24th. Um, the purpose of supplying handicapped parking spaces is to provide easy proximate access to activities, businesses, and services to people with significant mobility impairments, 
Centrally located accessible parking spaces are important for many individuals and vital for some. The DAAC understands that all existing parking spaces, including the two van accessible spaces located in the parking lot in front of Town Hall will be removed and converted to green space and that Boltwood Avenue will become one way, heading southbound. Um, I'd like to change a little bit of that. I'd like to say the DAAC understands that all existing parking spaces, including the two centrally located van accessible spaces. Uh -huh. okay. And I would not even mention town hall will be removed and converted to green space and that Boltwood Avenue will become one way heading southbound. And the reason I would do that is because those spaces are really provided to the, those spaces are not accessible to town hall, number one. Um, and number two, they really are critically, they're the, the most centrally located spaces in all of downtown. Okay, the next so take town hall out of it. Okay. Yeah, take that town hall out of there. Okay. Because they really do provide access to the center of town. Yep. More than anything okay. else. Yep. Uh, the town council approved plan labels two par parallel on street parking spaces located along Boltwood Avenue as being accessible. Parallel parking spaces are not suitable as accessible spaces nor van accessible spaces as they are unsafe. The configuration does not meet the requirements of 521 CMR 23 and will require a variance from MAAB. It seems that the only option being considered for van accessible parking near Town Hall will be in the parking lot behind Town Hall. Unfortunately, there is no accessible route provided from the parking lot behind Town Hall connecting to the existing Main Street public sidewalks due to the excessively steep sidewalk grades on Main Street. In fact, the accessible entrance to Town Hall is not accessible even now because of these grades. Since an accessible route cannot be made to the accessible entrance to Town Hall, CMR 521 section 23.3.3 .3 exception requires an accessible passenger drop-off be provided at that entrance. This should be included in the scope of work to rectify a longstanding deficiency. Although two accessible parking spaces were, in, and I, we shouldn't call them accessible. Although two, quote, accessible <laughs> okay. parking yep. spaces yep. were incorporated into the design when only one might be required. In fact, there are truly no van, there are truly no accessible parking spaces provided in this design, much less van. Okay. Uh, the DAs. You know, uh, one thing I experienced um, maybe like about two weeks ago when I went to the town hall for early voting, it is very difficult and we ended up parking on the street, but I wasn't alone. I wasn't driving the van. Someone was, was driving me there. And for me to go down the slope to the accessible entrance, was very difficult. It is pretty. Uh, it's inaccessible. High slope. So that's I, why the previous section requires an, a, a passenger drop off. Yes, that's required by code. Okay, because you're not going to right. re slope right. all of town to get there. That's right. Okay, so go on mm -hmm. from there, Marty. Um. The DA surge urges you to modify the plan to rectify this situation. There should be van accessible providing, provided that is centrally located. And I would take out of in front of town hall because that doesn't help us at all. Yep. It doesn't get you to town hall no matter where you put it. Okay. So I think it's a good letter. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, I Maureen, did you get all those changes? I did. I did. And so since um you know, the, the committee is seeing these revisions today. Um, would you want to make a vote to now approve this letter? So the first sentence, I think it says like no, on November 9th. You want to uh, change the date. 
Yeah, so maybe we would keep it for number ninth if you guys want to make a motion to approve this letter with with yeah with the um uh, oh okay uh, yeah we can edit. do that yeah, that makes sense yep. yep you mean with the information that we learned today yep yeah uh, yep. But, right so but then we need to put that in the letter because that's not in there well we learned... the, fir the first sentence says um marty can say it's like on november 9th the committee voted to send the letter to Dave Zomack. Okay. And then, and then Marty read it. And then I've been jotting down Marty's um, suggested changes. Okay. All right. So um, I have not been jotting them down, but I would remember them. So if you want to send me the chain, you know, the, the letter with the changes recommended that the committee um, approves, and we just have to rewrite. Um, I guess we could just say the following letter was modified after our November, the following letter prepared after our October meeting. No, we can't do that. As, as um, amended, as amended. So you guys reviewed it and you, yeah. and then uh, you talked about uh, suggest, you know, making some edits, just like when you approve meeting minutes, you say, oh, yeah. you spelled yeah. that wrong. Yeah, which yeah, did again. yeah. Um, and then you'll yeah. say approve as amended. Okay. So if you want to send me your um your, you know, like just a copy with the with the yeah. edits, then I can send it out. I should send it to Dave Zomek or to Paul Bachelman or to the council or to all three, or how do you think it should be sent? I think uh, Dave Zomack would be a good contact. Um, he, you know, he's the assistant town manager, and he is the project manager for the this project. So okay, and to Pat DeAngelis, sure, yeah. yeah, okay, okay, all right. So we have that letter, and then I have to work on my other letter that will go to Paul Bachelman and the council about the accessible signals. Right. Um, okay. Um, now, thank you. Is, do we need anything else? Um, I mean, we uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. So they put off the Pomeroy discussion again. Um, and I, I was wondering, given the that half of the town council has changed, seven people are remaining, six people are new. Um, how do we really feel about that North Common change? And are we as a committee, because of the parking problem, willing to ask them to revisit it or should we leave it alone? Um, well, the Spring Street parking lot, I think solves a lot of the issues that we were thinking about because we were concerned that they wanted us to park behind town hall. Okay. So and and if they make it two ways, or if they put the parking along the right with an extended sidewalk, even if it's one way, then that exactly. could solve. So do you want to leave it alone with the North Common being all green except for that big white sidewalk that we're going to ask them to put in? Or you know what, in that letter, we should talk about that sidewalk. I'd um, actually like to ask the designers to, to come up with a different solution. For parking. Yeah. Okay, so we I could think add we that shouldn't in. try and tell them what to do. I think they need to solve this problem. And their problem is uh, center of town accessible parking and they haven't solved it you know one thing that hit me when they were talking about the band and all the crowds and the porta potties and then they took away the parking lot so how are they going to solve that yeah right. exactly so maybe um, it might be a good idea to ask them to hold the design process until it is reviewed by all the new town staff not town council. Maybe it might be acceptable if we propose that. 
Well, since we, I don't know. I mean, we would have to go. We would have to go to Pat DeAngelis and ask her to bring it up again. I mean, that's what we would have to do. Right. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I wish she was here in a way because it's a very, um, you know, those two things are sort of contradictory. Um, and even though they can say, well, the law says we only need two parking spaces because we did away with the big parking lot so we don't have to have so many spaces. Um, the problem is they're inviting people for whom they're not providing parking except very far away. Yeah. So yeah. It, there's, I don't understand how we can, how we can really support both concepts, you know, like the cut in the parking and the increase in the, in the, uh, the citizenry that are going to be on that common because of what they're doing to make it nicer. It doesn't Myra, make sense to me. Myra, there and are also, actually other solutions to that. Okay. Um, in fact, I did one at the university that works quite well. So the close parking at the Mullen Center, there's that little parking lot right at the entrance. During yeah. events, that becomes all handicapped parking. During the week, it's regular parking. Okay. And so you could do the same thing on Spring Street. If you knew, you know, you could put bags over five or six more um, uh, parking meters and put, make them handicapped accessible. Interesting. Well, you that's a suggestion that. that should go to the council. That's yeah. a great idea. Okay. I mean, that's, that's for, for intermittent use, that works very well. Okay. And that's what we're talking about. Would that work for you, Tori and Saren? Yes. As long as it's enforced. Well, right. they'd have to have somebody there. Yeah. They just have to have a parking but monitor there. That's I what just want to point That's out that we're after one. We're just okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I need to go. Um, I'm for, so we, um, we, I guess okay. I am, um, I, I um, need to um, prepare for my next meeting. Um, we did not cover the general public comment period, unfortunately, um, which is my mistake. I, I Oh, yeah, and I wasn't about, here. I forgot about bringing that up earlier. Um, was anybody there? Um, there is one attendant attendee. Um, so if, if you do have a very uh, brief uh, public comment, um, you can um, raise your hand using um, star nine as they're calling in. Um, and sorry, sorry if um, to shut it, uh, cut everyone off. Um, and uh, I have been jotting down the the, the latest, co the last comment about um, you know could uh, temporary ADA parking spaces be provided on the Spring Street parking lot during events? Yeah, um, like that should go to the, the um, yeah to the town council about Gabrielle's um, proposal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm jotting that down. Um, and sorry. So, if anyone has, um, I, I've been really, in, you know, I've, uh, really enjoying these uh, conversations today. And um, keep those um, thoughts flowing. And if you have any other suggestions, um, feel free to email me um, so I can um, jot it down for next time um, for discussions. And we we actually didn't cover all the agenda items. So no. Um, so we'll... I have to figure out why I can't get on with my computer. Something changed and I it used to be very easy. Now they want a password and I don't know how to do that. I've never I'll had to use to... one. I'll, uh, let me jot that down. Uh, Myra needs, uh, needs password. Yeah, you'll need to zoom me when you have some free time. Let's see if you can send me some links and we'll talk about it on the phone and figure out why I couldn't get in because it was very yeah. strange. Yeah, and I've never I'll, had I'll trouble ask, with Zoom before. And I'll ask our IT uh, staff um, if they have any suggestions too. Um, so, all right. Um, so, all right, uh, thank you, folks. I have to go. All right. Thank so you, the folks. Next really. Meeting will be, and I uh, apologize for my inability to get in. That's all right. So, the next meeting is December the 14th. Oh, okay. So, it's five weeks. Okay. Yep. The second right. year. If that, if that is the second Tuesday, I think that is. Yep. Okay.
Okay. okay. All right. Have a great day. You Thank too. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.